next to a sausage factory on the second floor of a rented flat with his wife trying to make a living in what you might call the professional revolutionary business. He'd like to get back to Russia in 1917 because it's apparent that huge things are happening in Russia. The Tsar has been overthrown. The provisional government has taken over. But Lenin can't get from where he is to Russia. There's a war going on, and there's a lot of territory in between Switzerland and Russia to deal with. And then he gets some help from the facilitator, the leader of Germany's military, and for the most part by this time, civilian government, Eric Ludendorff. Ludendorff and the Germans have long been associated with Lenin's rise to power. The exact amount of responsibility that Germany has in that story is debatable and has been debated since 1917. One of the reasons historians have a hard time nailing down definitive answers is because it's one of those things that falls into the category of what we would call today covert operations or black ops. Top secret stuff. Both sides in the war were trying to undermine the cohesiveness and the stability of their opponents. And a potentially wonderful way to do that was to give money or arms or sometimes military advisors to revolutionaries and insurrectionists and breakaway groups and ethnic separatists and people who lived in countries that were colonies of some of the great powers but who wanted their independence and both sides as i said were doing this there's a lot of allegations about german involvement for example in the famous easter rising in 1916 in ireland how much german support that's questionable too. Part of the reason why is nobody was exactly advertising you know, these top secret affairs. Most of the stories trace German involvement at least as far back as 1915. Most of those stories suggest that it was contacts with leftist individuals who pointed out to the German government that there were shared goals on the part of Germany and some of these Russian revolutionary figures. Take, for example, Lenin and his particular offshoot of the communist in the mainstream known as the Bolsheviks. One of the things Lenin was calling for was peace. That's exactly what the Germans wanted from the Russians by 1917. They wanted the Russians out of the war. The Russians were tying down millions of German troops on the Eastern Front that the Germans would love to be able to switch over to the Western Front to fight the exhausted French and British before the Americans arrived in any sort of decisive numbers. Now the big gamble here, of course, is that the Bolsheviks, while they may share a common goal in getting Russia to leave the war, are not Germany's friends. Ludendorff deciding to use them as a tool is akin to adding another boxer into the World War I boxing match. We've used that analogy throughout this series, the idea of two boxers fighting each other. Part of Ludendorff's gamble here is he, he's talking about introducing a third boxer into the ring, one that wants to fight both the other two boxers, but Ludendorff has a pretty good idea that he'll go after the one Ludendorff and the Germans are fighting first. The Bolsheviks and Lenin are preaching the equivalent of a global civil war. 